people online. Can you hear me okay? Good. Hello, people in the room. Um, lovely to see you all here. Um, it's, it's lovely to be back at In Real Life Collaborations Workshop. It's been a while. Um, there's some spaces on this table, if more people want to join. Um, okay, so the format of this workshop, I'll just briefly explain. Um, so there's gonna, it's going to be very participatory. There's not going to be me doing a lot of anything much, hopefully. Um, so the people that are in the room, um, you're going to be working in groups. There is resources provided, so you don't have to use your laptop. In fact, you'll, the more space you can leave on the table, the better, really, because you want to be kind of getting around the table, getting around your, your paper-based whiteboards that you've got in front of you for the, for the activities that are coming up. Um, and those people that are joining online, um, you have access to a Miro board, which has... I'll explain how it works. When we get into the activity, um, you've got that facility. You'll be, you'll be in a breakout room, um, so you'll be able to communicate freely with one another for the for the group activities um you've also got there's me there's me facilitating i'm sorrel by the way i haven't introduced myself have i i'm i'm sorrel um i'm an ssi fellow from 2019 um i'll i'll come back to what the workshop's about in a second i'm just gonna let also introduce my co-facilitator lucy hi i'm lucy i'm from lancaster university i'm a phd student thanks lucy um, yeah, so the people online, Lucy's here to support you um, in any way that you need supporting. So if you get stuck, um, Lucy's on hand in the chat to help you out. Um, and those people in the room, I'm on hand to help you out if you get stuck with anything. Because a lot of it's going to be sort of self, you know, you're going to get given some stuff to do and you're just hopefully going to be able to get on and do it. Um, okay, so what's, let's start with an icebreaker, okay. So what I'd like everybody to consider is, this icebreaker question that you have on your the top resource sheet in front of you. Everybody sitting at a table has has this question in front of them. If you're online, Lucy's going to type it in the chat or put it on the screen or whatever she's going to do. Um, and the question is, thinking back to your worst experience delivering software, um, and if, if, if you've never delivered software, that's okay, just you can think about your worst experience on a project of any kind, any collaborative project you've ever done. Um, what made it so? And and you can use the post-its um, and you can just shove some stuff down in your little group or, or if you don't want to write down, you can just talk to each other, that's fine, okay. Um, and so what we're looking for here is like a word or a phrase that expresses what made that experience particularly awful for you. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to think about that and, and to share with one another. So, worst experience delivering software, what made it so? Yeah. You can use any post-it. I'd advise going for the one on the top, though, because it could get a little awkward. You can split them up as well. You can break the post-it notes into... Subpiles. Um, uh, oh, they. I don't think they need it for this because um, people online, you can type your responses in the chat, and Lucy's going to monitor. Okay, the table over here is like, you're cracking it, aren't you? You've got no post-it.
I think there's a common, com communication is cropping up a lot. What you might notice as you generate your um, ideas is that some of these might fall more under the category of sort of being social challenges, and some of them might fall more under the technical challenge category. So you, if you, you know, you can always sort of theme, organize them by theme if you want to. Okay, it looks like there's lots of ideas generating. Anybody want to um, share one that maybe made them laugh or cry? Anyone in the room? You can do someone else's if you want. Can I say something? Sorry? Can I say something to a question? Uh, hi, yeah, so one from us, uh, poor requirements and scope creep. Poor requirements and scope creep. Um, and would you would you classify that as being more of a social or more of a technical problem? <laughs> a little bit of both. A little bit of social impacting technical, perhaps. Um, any, any others anyone wants to share? What about the online ones? Did we get any? <laughs> this is the microphone past the parcel. So yeah, we've had lots online. Um, one's it's coming from you, so I don't want to mute myself. Um, somebody that only works at midnight and communicates by email during the day, and then there was someone else had keen team working at weekends. Um, documentation, um, rush projects, cutting corners, um, being asked why is it not finished. Um, plotting different scales from two different teams working on data. Um, quick and dirty, there's, there's, there's plenty rolling through in there. Yeah. Oh, so, and what have we got over here? Anyone Anyone got a, a, their personal favourite on this table? I guess the one that stands out was uh, where, you know, we talked extensively about what they wanted done and when I did it, it turned out that that's actually not what they want. <laughs> Can't portion the blame necessarily. Okay. Um so someone described what they wanted and then at the end of the project or once it had been delivered yeah, that didn't turn out to be okay. Say you know changing a few weeks in, you know, when we checked in, they're like, no, this is not <laughs> Okay, awesome. So lots and lots of um, um, issues um, surfaced there. And and j so hopefully you've kind of got the gist of what where we're trying to take you today is to think about the social, the, the impact of social um, interactions, team interactions, and particularly communication, which came up a lot in, in the things that you've brought with you. Um, on actual software project outcomes. Um, and so the activities are going to give you to do in just a minute is hopefully going to allow you to kind of enter. It's, it might, I, I don't know how far into the role play you're going to get. You can take it as far as you like, but, um, but kind of act out some of the kind of worse decisions that you can make, but really think about the human drivers behind those decisions like the human so, so you're going to get into character so you're going to be given um a bit of a like a scenario you're going to get a bit of a story a backstory and you're going to get given some characters some personas and you've got to try and embody these personas and think about the type of things that these particular people might struggle with their frustrations what they what they care about um what kind of things are going to that what kind of behaviors might um might they act out and and then hopefully we're gonna 
what's going to happen is that your project is going to absolutely go completely off the rails and and we're going to hear about some of the interesting and uh, devastating ways in which it, it went wrong at the end of the session um so hopefully the mirror board is set up online for the people online i hope that the mirror board is set up in a fashion that you can hope make kind of sense of it um but basically there's four kind of tasks you've got and you'll have five minutes for each task and you work together in your groups and and we'll kind of be timekeepers and we'll kind of say right five minutes is up move on to the next bit and and the idea is just to work through the task so the first task is um well you're gonna have to have a little look at the background story and familiarize yourself with the characters and then you're going to be having a think about how the thoughts and, and feelings of the characters manifest in their behaviors so there's a bit of brainstorming around that that you're going to do in your teams then uh, buh, 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 then you're going to think about the challenges the team faces so based on the previous task think about how those how those then manifest as challenges for that team um uh, Oh, maybe it'd be better if I just explained each as we go through. Okay, let's start with the first one then. So you're going to have, uh, I'll give you a bit longer. We'll have sort of seven minutes to familiarise yourself with the characters and and start to think about how their thoughts and feelings might manifest in their behaviours. And so you can use the, if you need more paper, because you can have a fresh bit of paper for each task, um, I'll just, bring more paper around so just get a fresh bit and that can be your fresh whiteboard um if 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 anybody's confused just just stick your hand up and come and sort you out but i'm gonna let you all get stuck in okay so and then we'll call time on that task when it's time to move on to the next bit okay Okay, sorry to interrupt your discussion. Just to, just to move you on a bit, because I'm conscious of time. Um, hopefully by now you've sort of had an opportunity to explore the characters a bit. You've maybe thought about some of the challenges that this team's likely to encounter, and and now I'd like you to think about some of the worst decisions that this team could make about how to collaborate, about how to work together. So knowing what you think you know about these characters, what are some bad choices they could make and maybe these might connect you to some of the things that you've experienced in the past yourselves okay so i think we're headed into the sort of last sort of five minutes or so of, of this main activity so we need to be getting on to thinking about consequences now um so you've thought about challenges you've thought about bad decisions the team could make um Maybe you could even be mindful about how you know, this is getting a bit meta, but the team that you're in is actually collaborating on this task right now. And, and you know, are there any are there any negative consequences happening right here, right now that you could even um, pick up on and use? But anyway, th when you're thinking about consequences, I want you to not just think about the consequences for the software. That's very important. I, I do want you to think about the consequences of the software. What, what might the impact be on the software that's produced at the end but also think about what's the impact on the people what you know did they come out of this having a thinking oh that was great let's go again um or <laughs> or something else um so yeah thinking about consequences uh, and even for the research as well consequences for research future research all sorts of um factors you could you could bring into play and and what we're looking for is we, we want to tell some funny stories at the end of this session so I, i'm looking for like the worst you know the most you know they can be ridiculous but obviously not completely ridiculous because they're within the confines of this story um things that could have happened on this project so dire consequences please you've got five minutes left i think Okay, 
I think our online participants are back, so that means time is up for us in the room as well. Um, with some very clever Miro work, Lucy's going to help to sort of collate the most dire consequences. Um, so we've we've got some that have presumably come from the online group already on the board, and um, can we add to that with some con um, contributions from the room, please? Um, I'm not going to volunteer anybody, but maybe somebody could volunteer themselves to share their worst worst consequence. Uh, we think that one of the worst things that could happen is that uh, the paper that was published in Nature is retracted and the names of all the authors are disgraced and there's a Twitter storm that um, makes a mockery of them. Anyone better that? <laughs> so the team goes to their final European Commission project meeting. The project is panned, but somehow Giles with his superb communication skills, persuades everyone that their part was a success, even though their part was the bit that caused the failure. He gets promoted again. They get more funding. The cycle continues. Oh, and which of these two is the more common scenario in academia, do we think? <laughs> oh, sorry, there's a hand up online. Did you just say? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, yes, um, I said, yeah, I was going to suggest something similar. Um, so even though the code wouldn't work, the PI would probably would push it, would uh, make an effort to publish it, even though it doesn't work. And then he would get extra funding. And yes, the cycle continues, as one gentleman mentioned okay, in the so, Robinson yeah, room. So Thank you. More funding. Sorry. Oh, thanks, Sherman. Had you finished? Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. Uh, yes, I finished. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. I think he's frozen. Okay. Leaves academia. Just leave. Well, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, I mean, this is already happening. I mean, this is not even imaginary, is it? People are leaving academia, and it could be for reasons not too far removed from those that you've explored. Um, any any others? Lucy's got some. I was listening to this team say how much better they feel about their teams having worked with these teams. So it's positive consequence of negativity. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, there's a. Uh, I'm sure there's a word for that, an expression for that, and I can't think what it is now. But sorry, Schadenfreude is probably the right one. Um, yeah. So. Um, yes, as a German, I can confirm that. Thank you. Um, so what I hope we've, uh, well, actually, no, I, what I didn't neglect to um, mention at the beginning of this was that um, this, this workshop was sort of kind of inspired by some research I did for my SSI fellowship, which was around um, the impact of research software project management um, and development practices um, on project outcomes. Um, and actually, kind of the scenarios that you've explored today, although I've not, you know, I've not, it's not directly taken from a real, it is very much based on real, you know, real stuff that, that this stuff happens frequently in research projects. And, and it does have negative consequences, both for the software and for the, the people involved. And what we didn't, so we could spend a lot of time exploring, like, you know, this, what is the human impact of the fact that these researchers have been discredited or fired or, or they've, you know, carried on making rubbish software, you know, do they feel good about that, <laughs> you know, um, and, and these are, this is important um, stuff to think about. And so that, so, like, in the interest of sort of wrapping things up, I wanted to just signpost you really towards some, so on the Miro board, and, and if you're in the room, you can always access this after the session. Um, I've just shared some links to some um, research, including some research that Lucy's doing, which um, I'll give her the opportunity to uh, say something about in a second. Um, just some links to some stuff that might be interesting for you to explore if you're in, if you want to. Um, so, yeah, I'm not going to go through it all, but you can you can have a look and see if um, if any of it chimes with you. 
Um, uh, Lucy, sorry, did you want to just say anything? You're all right, okay. Um, but yeah, there's a link to Lucy's work. Values-based decision-making in software development. Um, okay, so to finish with today, I'd like to just encourage everybody to do a little bit of reflection on what they've experienced um, and to sort of, uh, you don't have to share it, but think about what you might take away with you from today's session and use or what you might do differently um, as a result of today's session. So just five minutes of reflection really. Um, and if you want to share, there is the mirror board for people online, you can use the mirror board or those of you in the room or we'll invite you to share in a minute. But yeah, just a couple of minutes of quiet reflection on what you've just experienced. Okay, so just wrap up your reflections. Um, and we have, we've got five minutes. Or? Yeah, we've still got, that's what I thought, yeah. So, so we've got time to just share a little bit of what, you know, what we're taking away with us today. Um, so does anybody want to, everyone's pulling a face like, no. Um, has anyone had any any light bulb moments today? I was just making this point right now about how I think there needs to be a, a role in between the PI and the software developers or the people who will be doing the engineering, what I, I will call an RSA, a research software architect, someone who can digest a big problem and spit out little pieces that can then be managed by a project manager and that can be acted on by the RSE. So that role is really important because as you, as you stated here, the project manager has no knowledge of the domain and is not a software developer. But at the same time, the, the, the rest of the people on the team have got some coding experience or coding knowledge, but still there needs to be a role somewhere that breaks down the big task from the PIs into little tasks that can then be easily digested. That's my, my thought. Thanks for sharing, Paul. Um, so yeah, does anyone want to add anything to or come back to Paul on what he's just shared? Um, Neil looks like he wants to say something. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point. It's It was the role I was in um, about, so much about breaking down the big idea, uh, things from the, from the PI into small tasks. Um, it was more about trying to make sure that the hundreds of ideas that were coming from the PI were given prioritization so that the, the team could actually implement it. So yeah, I, I think it's a really important role and um, one that perhaps the research software engineering community could, could promote a little bit more as being something that, yeah, RSC teams could provide, an RSC architect. It's a really good role. And if I can jump in a little bit on that, because it's a really interesting point. I'm wondering if this is also a role that maybe at times the team can kind of learn to do for itself better. So it, this doesn't have to be like, you know, all these roles, they can work in some projects and not in others. But if we identify that there are certain things, capabilities in the team that need to be nurtured somehow, whether it's one person doing it or whether it's the whole team doing it, that, you know, th these are something that what you seem to be describing there is, is something that, you know, some kind of team coach or just the team can coach itself, you know, to, to have that awareness of what, what capabilities we need within our team in order to be able to, to collaborate well, to do this well. Um, and it doesn't necessarily, it can be self-healing, the team can be self-healing. Um, does anyone else want to share anything? I was just wondering if we maybe had more project managers with some technical skills, a sort of alternative way of having the, the architect, but actually merging that maybe into one role where you've got someone who at least understands the technology well enough to talk to the developers, but is good at project management. And so sometimes that might be an RSC who's leading the project management or the project managers move more into coding. 
Anyone want to add to that or agree or disagree or more project management skills? I think that's, we sort of, in my group, we end up with that, that the most senior of the RSEs working on any project is classified as the project manager. Having probably had no formal project management training, but they have that role of being the person who has to like organize tasks and pin a PI down to what are we actually working on at the moment and break it down into chunks and plan some timelines for that. And that that role is in our group just what the lead developer on a project is doing. So whether it's better that way than having a dedicated project manager, I don't know. Is that something that just depends on the scale of projects or having better training each way? So we have those. So re reflecting on projects that have really worked for me, just in response a little bit to that, project management is important. Um, the thing that's made projects really successful though actually was having somebody really good at the sort of like the user experience and requirements design to really have the time for them to sit down with people and break that down and that that, that was a role that for me actually helped to really help to define what was wanted out somebody who's really good at just listening to people and capturing all that information and i don't think that always can be the engineer because they're often linking to technical solutions rather than thinking about what needs to be done. So I don't know whether there's something around just that kind of like how do we bring in some of those UX and ethnographic processes into what we're doing as a, as a standard. And it's interesting that you, you phrase it that way because I was having a conversation with someone where I, 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 I thought about the role of someone who does the user experience or user understanding as an anthropologist. So we need technical anthropo anthropologists who who can digest the usage patterns, the usage problems, and, and convert them into, into code, or, or into maybe requirements or designs or whatever it is that can then be worked on by people who are technical-minded, uh, who don't have to bother with the users, um, but can then deliver working code that fits in with how people are using the technology. Yes. Really interesting because what this is, it's almost like the conversation has now sort of turned into a bit of a conversation about thinking about what do we need within our team to succeed? What, what skills and capabilities do we need within our team besides just the technical skills, but also all the communication, all the social, all the project management skills, all of those not being neglected anymore, but actually taking the time at the start of the project to sit down and think about what that looks like, what do we need? Who are, you know, are the customers? I mean, in that scenario you were given, there were customers because there was the other teams that were going to use the API. And and sometimes I think that bit gets neglected from the start of projects. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that signposted you towards is a resource around, uh, what's it called, Team Canvas? You know, it might be something, looking at something like that, um, thinking about how these kind of tools might just be able to help you. You don't have to go agile, if, you know, if that word needs a bit of dirty taste in your mouth you don't have to but just think about what what skills do we need within our team to succeed besides the technical skills but also not neglecting them um okay i think that sort of probably brings us to time doesn't it oh you three minutes left. okay cool well anyone else want to share anything <laughs> oh anybody online yeah sorry any anyone online want to yeah no please I was just wondering, are the resources that we've used today available for us to use ourselves anywhere? Um, yeah, absolutely. You can, um, I'll leave you that mirror board open. You can copy and paste it. You can, but there's the, links on it. The personas and everything, the are they available? Yeah, they're, they're on, on there as well. Um, you know, please, because actually that, that was one of the things, was to, you know, that Lucy and I discussed, that even running an activity like this in your team might potentially be helpful for your team to start to sort of get a bit more creative and think outside the box about what 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 are, what could go wrong for us as a team and and to, to open up that conversation um wider than than just the the, the activity of developing software so in, in industry i've used this at the start of a project we, we work out how can we make this project fail and have that upfront kind of fun serious conversation about what we're doing and why and how we could make it go really bad 
and it, it does bring a slight lightness to sort of discussing difficult elephants in the room before you get going. And that was at a trade union, so we had some big elephants. Thanks, Lucy. And we've got another question over here. Sorry, I'm making you walk around. Hello. Um, it just reminded me of a resource I saw recently that is a, a way to take this even further into the silliness, which is if any of you play like Dungeons and Dragons, I saw a thing that was like, instead of your team in Dungeons and Dragons being like warriors going to kill a monster, why don't you go, your team is now pitching your idea to the board, but we're all monsters and goblins. <laughs> and like, in that silliness and that world, like use the lightness of the game to work through those kind of things and like allow people to play the evil goblin or the friendly elf or whatever in these projects and see how that pans out. Yeah, so I, I'll try and find the link for it and put it on the Google Doc at some point. And I suppose the the an, anti antidote or whatever um, to this that is also perhaps worth thinking about at the start of the project is besides the sort of the software success metrics or you know however you how however you're choosing to evaluate success of, on your research software project. Think about the human success metrics. What does your team need to feel successful in itself as people, as individuals, as a team? Um, and are we thinking about that as we progress through the, you know, this is important too. It, at, the, at the end of the world, uh, at the end of the world, no, I hope not at the end of the world. At the end of the day, you know, you know, it, it, it's the, the more important things in life besides delivering research software. And, you know, so think about that too. Um, <laughs> um, any any last final any final thoughts words? Anyone online? No, cool. Oh, thanks so much. You've been lovely participants. Um, enjoy the rest of the conference. <laughs>